In this presentation we're going to look at an ANOVA procedure. So four laboratory technicians perform six determinations of C of 2,4-dinitrophenyl in water according to the same specified procedure. Now the data set is as follows. So those are the four analysts. So analyst A, analyst B, analyst C, analyst D. And each of them perform the experiment six times and these are the results okay now what we want to do is sort of check if there is a difference uh, between how one analyst does it and the other okay so I th in, in, in this experiment essentially they all should be the same results but you might be looking at this and thinking that those results look very high now if you're familiar with the chemistry behind it um, this is just a sort of contrived example and these numbers might be very extreme but we'll just go along with them for the time being okay so uh, we want to sort of see if there's a, a significant difference between the mean of the de determinations made by the four investigators and again it might be the numbers here might be a bit extreme it's just to set the, up the example. So essentially what we might do is run this procedure in a programming language called R and if we do this is the type of output we would get but what I will do here what I have done here is that I have taken out some of the values here so what I have to do is actually figure out what goes in here. So I'm going to set up my little table here and what we're going to have here is source degrees of freedom sums of squares, mean square, and the f-test statistic. I'll leave out the p-value because it's written in the output. So the analyst, ANLT, and uh, residual, also known as error, and then down here I'm going to have total. Okay. Now, so let's look at our table here. Now the total is not, there's no total column sorry total row here but I'm going to add one in just to sort of make life easy on myself so first off the analysts the number of degrees of freedom for the analysts well if we look back here we see that there's actually four analysts so analyst is a factor with four levels okay so the degrees of freedom is going to be 4 minus 1 okay which is 3 okay the total degrees of freedom is n minus 1 okay and let's just see how many uh, values we have all together so there's 24 observations all together 6 each for each of the 4 analysts so n here is going to be 24 make a little note of that down here okay so total degrees of freedom is going to be 23 okay so what does this make the residual degrees of freedom well essentially what we have to do is they actually have to add up to 23. So analyst degrees of freedom plus residual degrees of freedom have to add up to 23. So it's essentially it has to be 20. Okay, the next thing is, let's go back here, the sums of squares. So we're actually given these values here 9, 9, what is it? 9, 4, 2. And the net other one is 6, 9, 1, 8. Okay, if we were to add those together, we would get the total sum of squares. So that is 0, 6, 8, carry the 1, 6, carry the 1. So 1, 6, 8, 6, 0. Okay, the next thing we have to do is so what we need now is to find these values here. Okay, and uh, so the mean square as always mean square is the sum of square divided by degrees of freedom so this is going to be 99962 divided by 3 so that is 33314 okay and likewise for uh, the, the mean square for error or mean square for residual that is 6918 divided by 20 let me just get my calculator So it is three four five point nine. Okay. So now what we have to do is find out the F test statistic. Okay. 
And the F test statistic is essentially the mean square for analyst divided by the mean square for error. Okay, so it is three 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 one four divided by three four five point nine. I make that to be ninety six point three one one. Okay, three one one. So that is our table filled out. Now we also have the p-value there, which we're going to interpret separately. But we can sort of see that it's a very significant difference. Okay. So essentially, you probably would have caught that that these values are way higher than the the values for A are way higher than the values for B. Now you probably sort of think these make in the real world these may, numbers would make no sense. I know, but just for this example, we'll just go along with them. Okay. Now, uh, just as a sort of quick remark, the F test statistic here is a random variable with degrees of freedom. Now, we're not actually asked this per, per se, but essentially the degrees of freedom are these numbers here. Okay, so if you were asked this in a question, degrees of freedom for the critical value or if you do a hypothesis test or something like that, there'd be 3 and 20 from the F distribution. Okay. That's just in case you were to get asked that again. 3 and 20, where do those numbers come from? It's this number here and this number here. Okay. So, um, okay, so let's actually look at the questions here that we were asked specifically. The value for degrees of freedom, okay, has been removed. What is this value? Yeah, we got 20 there. And we also got the F test statistics, so A and B are done. Uh, what the state the null and alternative hypothesis for this procedure? Okay, so there's a couple of ways we could sort of state the null and alternative. So the null hypothesis could be written as H zero uh, mu A. That's the average result for analyst A in terms of titration in terms of measurement. Mu B equals mu C equals mu d with the alternative being uh, uh, mu is different for one analyst at least for at least one analyst something like that okay or another way we could sort of say it is no significant h0 no significant effect for analyst for the factor analyst does it say the results do not depend on which analyst is doing it now you you're thinking oh, that makes no well that doesn't look uh, that our our data does not support that you're dead right Essentially, what we have here is a very high p, or a very low p-value. Uh, it's highly significant. Okay, three stars, three asterisks are highly significant. So, highly significant reject null. That's uh, for based on the p-value. So, reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So, uh, that's it. Based on, what's your conclusion of the procedure? Yeah, there is definitely a difference in measurements depending on which analyst you, uh, which set of results uh, for which analyst you're looking at. Okay. So uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, yeah, that'll, that'll do. Yeah, I was going to ask another question, but I'll, I'll do it in another video. Okay, that's one way Nova.